Hey there, is that DaVinci Resolve? Don't you wish the dynamic zooms were just a little bit better? Wouldn't it be great if you could zoom in and out with just one adjustment clip? Control the scale, offset and speed with a handy little slider. Or maybe even set a custom curve to get the zoom looking exactly as you want it. Well now you can, introducing the Mr. Alex Tech Magic Zoom. Available at buymeacoffee.com, may or may not contain actual magic, terms and conditions apply. Now I know that introduction was incredibly stupid, but it gives you all the information that you need to know. It's a new tool designed for DaVinci Resolve 17, free and studio versions. You can download it from the Buy Me A Coffee link down in the description below. If you don't wish to pay for it, just put a zero in the box. Of course, any donations are gladly accepted. And if you don't wish to leave your name and email address, just put whatever in the box, you'll still be able to download and start using the tool. Right, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's open DaVinci Resolve, take a look at how you install it and how to use it. So the first thing we need to do is to get this installed. So open up DaVinci resolve doesn't matter what project or what you're doing then jump into the fusion tab make sure that you've got your nodes open down here if you haven't just click on the word nodes up at the top and then you need to grab the drfx file which you've downloaded so i've got mine in a folder here and then we're just going to click it and drag it down and release it into the nodes here I just close this and then it's going to ask me if you want to install we just need to click on install and then we will restart davinci resolve Cool, now I've restarted DaVinci Resolve. I'm back on the Edit tab. If I was to go to Effects Library, come down to Effects, scroll down, we can now see we've got a Magic Zoom. So it's installed and it's ready to use. Now there's a quick caveat, quick warning I need to give you here. These work best on adjustment clips and that's because of the way that the frames work in the background. If you put them on a clip which hasn't been cut up, it'll be absolutely fine, but if you've cut or snipped your clips on your timeline, then you try and add this effect, it won't work correctly. So you need to use an adjustment clip. Unfortunately, there's also a bug with adjustment clips, which has been in DaVinci Resolve for a while now. So there's a bit of a workaround you have to do, but it's really quick. You do it once at the beginning of the project and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna show you that now. So what you want to do, as soon as you open a project where you think you may use this tool, open the effects library, go to effects, grab an adjustment clip, put it on your timeline, Cut it to a rough length, doesn't matter what, I'm just going to go with a few seconds. Grab your adjustment clip, put it into your media pool, delete the one off your timeline, and then when you want to add an adjustment clip, you don't use this one from the effects library, you use this one from your media pool. And that guarantees that you'll have no hiccups and everything will work as expected. So I'm going to grab this adjustment clip, I'll put it on my timeline, and then I'll go to the effects, and I will grab the magic zoom, and we'll put that on there as well. Now alternatively, what you could do is put the magic zoom on here, open up the inspector, go to file, call this magic zoom, and then you could put that in your media pool, so then every time you want it you just go, oh grab a magic zoom, put it down here, and then it's good to go. So I've got my magic zoom on my timeline, and if we hit play, by default it'll just give us a slow zoom in like this, and this has got a linear curve to it. It's a straight line, so there's no acceleration. If we give it a click, we're going to open up the inspector, we're going to go to effects, and this is where we can start having a bit of fun with it. So the first thing you've got is your zoom type. So we've got standard, which is basically your standard dynamic zoom. It just zooms in or zooms out. By default, it zooms in. If you want to swap it so it zooms out, all you need to do is down here, we've got an invert tick box. Just tick that, and then it'll reverse it so we're zooming out instead. If we click on this little drop down by the zoom type, then we've got zoom and hold. So this does exactly what it says on the tin. It'll do a zoom in, and then it'll just hold its position until the end of the adjustment clip, and then cut off. And then if we do the drop down one more, we've got mirror, which will just mirror the beginning and the end. So we're gonna hit play, it'll zoom in, it'll hold that position, and then it'll zoom out. I'm gonna leave this as mirror for this demonstration. Now underneath there, we've got pivot. Now you can just move this, by moving the X or the Y axis up and down. And basically this is the point that we're zooming in to. So we can choose the point that we want to zoom to. To make life a little easier, underneath your preview window, do the little drop down in the bottom left hand corner, change this to fusion overlay. And then all you need to do is click on this X in the middle. It's a little bit fiddly at times, but just make sure it goes white, hold your mouse, and then you can just drag. So you can point where you want to zoom into. So I'm going to zoom into one of these bolts up here. And now if we were to hit play, it'll just zoom in, hold, and then zoom out again. Cool. Now down here, 
We'll come back to this bit in a moment, don't worry. We've got the scale, the offset, and the speed. So the zoom scale is how much we're zooming in. So one is a two times zoom. So I'm just gonna move my playhead into the middle here. If we adjust the scale, you can see whether it's zooming in loads or just a tiny bit, you can just have a play with that. You can even do negatives rather than using the invert. If you were to put it as a negative number, it would zoom out instead. I want it to go into about half. So let's go with a 0.5. The offset is your starting position. So I'm going to move my playhead to the very beginning. If we change the offset, so we can start already zoomed out and then it will zoom in, or we can start already zoomed in and then it will zoom in a little bit further. So you can just mess around with the offset. We can double click just to reset to the default. And then underneath there, we've got speed. So by default, when you're using the zoom and hold and the mirror, the zoom will take one second. So it's a one second zoom in, It'll hold throughout the, the duration of the adjustment clip. Now, however long it is, it'll just keep holding. And in the last second, it'll zoom back out again. If you want to speed that zoom up, just move this down. So you put this as one, and that'll be half a second. I know it's the wrong way around, but think of it as like a fraction rather than anything else. And if you want to slow it down, we'll put it as four, and it'll take two seconds. So that's how you adjust your scale, your offset, and your speed. Now, the really cool stuff is here in this graph. We've got curve, and then we've got the graph. So you can click to add additional points, and then you can move these around, put them wherever you want. Click on them, you've got the little handles, you can do little curves, and you can just go a little bit crazy. So let's just see what that looks like. It's gonna go in, out, in, out again, and then finish up. Now, if you've done something crazy like that and you want to just revert it back to how it was, just right click anywhere, come down to reset, and it'll just give you the standard linear line. What I prefer to do is I generally don't add any additional points. Just click on this bottom handle, and then you get this handle. You can just drag this to make your curve, same for the top, and then you can just do what you like. So this one will be quite slow at the beginning, then it'll speed up and have a nice tidy finish at the end. And if we hit play, there you go, it looks something like that, and it'll just do the same thing on the way out. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to use the graph, click on this curve drop down, and you've got easing, and you've got these standard easing tools. So we could just go to Expo and Elastic, just for example, and then we hit play, and it'll do that instead. So you can just customize it, pick whatever you want, and have a play until you've got this curve exactly as you want it. And then underneath that, we've got some additional options. So you've got edges, so you can change the edges. So by default, obviously, if I was to zoom out, we have just end up displaying what's underneath, which is just black. But if we don't want this black area, we can change the edges to something like wrap, or wrap the edges, we can duplicate the edges, or we can mirror the edges. And you can actually do some kind of cool effects with it, or you can just use it to hide. If you've zoomed out a tiny bit, you can barely see the frame actually does quite a good job of hiding it. And then you can zoom in. So you can just have a play with that. We've also got angle. This doesn't animate, you just have to keyframe it. But if you wanted to keyframe the angle, I've put that there. And then you've also got motion blur. Now the motion blur on this can actually look really good, but it is a little bit intensive on your system. But if I tick the box, we can then choose the quality and the shutter angle. So let's give it some motion blur. And if we hit play, you can see that we've got some nice motion blur going on with the zoom, which actually makes it look really quite cool. Now, the very last thing I've got to show you is I'm gonna scroll back up to this pivot because there are keyframes on the pivot. So what you can do is I'm gonna zoom into this point. At this point here, I'm gonna say keyframe. And then by this point here, let's say I want to be zoomed into somewhere else. I can drag my pivot, we'll move it down here instead. And then if we hit play, it's gonna zoom into that point and then the pivot's gonna move. So now we're down here instead. And then at the end, it's just gonna zoom us out from there. That's linear, it's just in a linear path. But what you can do in this magic zoom, you've got this little icon here, which will take you to the fusion page. Give that a click. You should see the magic zoom node down here. If you click on spline, and then you've got magic zoom, transform, pivot, and the displacement, give that a tick. And then you've got the standard spline tools. So you could do some additional curves for that movement as well. So the easiest way to do it, I'm just gonna click on this icon here, which is just gonna make sure that I can see both of these keyframes. 
We're just going to click and hold our mouse to highlight them both. I'll hit S on my keyboard. We'll do a bit of a curve. Let's do something quite dramatic so it's quite obvious. And then if we go back to edit, we'll hit play. We'll zoom in. We'll do a nice little movement over to there. And then right at the end, we'll zoom back out again. And there you go. That's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the tool, let me know. I'd love to see you guys using it, putting it to some good use. Hopefully it's useful. Let me know if it is. Give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments or feedback down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you want to see a little bit more, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.